morning, everyone. Welcome back to our live stream this Friday. And before we begin our worship, let us pray. Um, Lord God, we thank you for this day today. We thank you for giving us the strength that we put um, throughout our day, Lord God. Um, we pray as we worship, we'll do this unto you, Lord God. Let, our ears, let us use our voices just for you and only you. And in Jesus' name, I pray.
for this worship that we can have tonight. We pray for everyone watching, wherever they be, in their respectful homes, Lord God. I pray that you watch over them. And Lord, we pray for the message that will be given tonight, Lord God. Let it be a good one. And um, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. just for the things that you can do or you have done for us, Lord, but because you are God, you are our Savior, you are our Jehovah, you are everything to us, oh God, you're everything we need in our everyday situations, oh God, and so Lord, we just come to worship you, to adore you, oh Lord, to bring you ourselves, our lives as an offering before you, Lord, as an act of worship tonight. And Lord, as we learn from your word, may you transform us, oh God, to become more and more like Jesus. And may we be challenged, Lord God, to live our lives in obedience to your word. And Father, I pray that as we gather as well to pray for needs, Lord, that because of who you are, oh God, we know that we can depend on you, that we know that you hear our cries for help, oh God, you hear our cries of petition and supplication in behalf of the needs of your people, oh God. And so, Lord, I pray that you will find in us a heart of true worshipers, oh God. You will find in us, Lord, your people that is desiring to know you more and to be known by you, oh God. So, Father, we let the Holy Spirit rule in our lives tonight and every every moment of our lives, oh God pray this in Jesus' name, and we thank you for what you have in store for us in your word. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Before we go into prayer, I would just like to share uh, some gleanings from the word of God as God has just impressed in my heart, you know, dwelling upon these thoughts and these verses in Luke 10. Shall we open our Bibles to Luke 10, verses 38 to 42? This is a familiar story of Mary and Martha. And I pray that, you know, even though in the familiar, we will find a central focus that the Holy Spirit wants us to, to laser in so that we will understand what God has for us from these verses. I entitled this sharing as Just Sit. Verse 38, Luke 10, verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Verse 39, she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Verse 40. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Verse 41. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things. Verse 42. But, a few, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Amen. We are familiar with this narrative about Martha and Mary. And, you know, the story is uh, when Jesus and his disciples came to the village of Bethany. The, he came 
to the house of Martha, who is also the sister of Lazarus and the sister of Mary. And so can you imagine, right, if you have the disciples with you and Jesus and you are the, the, the hostess, right, the homeowner, then knowing that Jesus had traveled long and, and b- most likely weary from all that journey and ministry, you know, uh, they would need um, food. They would need um, to rest. And so Ma- Martha became busy. You know, if you would look at verse 38, the verse said, a woman named Martha opened her home to him. So we can surmise from this verse, right, that Martha is the older of the sister, Martha and Mary. And so she had a sister, verse 39, called Mary, who did what? Who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. So Martha opened the home to Jesus and his disciples, but Mary chose to sit at the Lord's feet and listening to to what he said but Martha because she was older she was distracted by all preparations that had to be made right to feed the disciples to provide probably beddings right because they were going to sleep the night or just to to have them um, rest and be comfortable while they were visiting at their home so she got so busy and so she noticed that Mary was just sitting at the Lord's feet And so she came to Jesus and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And to to our surprise, right, you would expect, okay, go Mary, go help Martha. But Jesus answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. You know, I would like to zero in on verse 42. Where it says, the Lord said, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. And Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is not to say that we can just sit all day long, right, at the Lord's feet. We can do that. That is going to be glorious, right? But it doesn't also encourage us to not be helpful uh, to, to to the things that needed to be done as Martha has gotten busy with. But the message here is what is most important. The Lord said, indeed, only one. Few things are needed or indeed only one. Tell yourself only one. Only one thing is the most needful for us. And Mary has chosen that one thing, and it will not be taken away from her. I would like to zero in with the acronym of SIT, S-I-T. You know, Mary chose to sit, letter S, sit and savor his presence. She chose to sit and savor his presence. We can glean from this narrative that they have might haven't seen uh, each other for quite a while. And so Mary chose to sit and savor the presence of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, and listening to what he said. You know, it's, w- we have experiences where we have guests from, uh, that we haven't seen or fellowship with for quite a while, and we are so excited, right, that when they arrive, we can't wait to just sit with them and, 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 and fellowship with them and talk about times and talk about how you're doing, right? But on the other hand, having guests in our house can make us so busy that we forget that the guests are there to fellowship with us. So we have a choice every day whether to sit and savor the Lord's presence or to scurry about in the things that needed to be done for the day. And sometimes because we scurried and worried and got so busy with everyday life that we miss the most important and the first priority, which is to sit and savor and worship in the presence 
worship the Lord and just dwell and bask in his presence. And so church, you know, um, Mary chose the good part. The Lord said in other versions, Mary, she chose that good part and it will not be taken away from her. May we every day choose to do what is the first priority, which is sit and savor his presence. Worship is foremost in our lives. We cannot do without worship. Our fellowship, our in time with the Lord Jesus in worship, our devotional worship, personal worship, because we worship congregationally on Sundays and during these meetings, but the most important part of every day is our personal worship unto the Lord. And so let us choose to have a time dedicated normally or ideally. It's recommended at the beginning of the day or if, it's wor if it works for you towards the end of the day at night where you will sit in your spirit, right? Maybe not literally sitting or, or you know, just s squatting in your uh, quiet place, right? Sitting and savoring the Lord's presence. So choose to sit and savor versus to scurry and worry right away. Letter I, Mary went for intimacy first. Intimacy with the Lord. You know, it's a rare, it's not every day that they have Jesus as a guest in their home. And so Mary chose to spend the first moments of the time that Jesus came to their house to spend it with the Lord Jesus and just listen to what he has to say. And for sure, there were also the other disciples sitting alongside with her beside Jesus, right? <clears throat> Maybe in their uh, living area or, in, you know, filling up the whole space where they could just l sit and listen to what the Lord has to say. We need to pursue intimacy with the Lord first. She understood that she needed to hear the words of Jesus. And church, we cannot start our day without hearing and listening to the word of God first. Because otherwise, the loud noises from the world, the loud noises from the daily demands of our chores, our schoolwork, our jobs, our businesses will cloud out the voice of the Lord that we should listen to first and hear first to start the day right and to start the day. <clears throat> the, the only thing, Jesus said, only one, only one thing needed and the rest will just be secondary. So intimacy first. And you will notice, all of us can testify that when we spend intimate moments with the Lord first, we, our soul and spirit and even our bodies are refreshed, renewed, and restored supernaturally. You know, when we start the day with the Lord first and we are able to go through the daily grind of life, at the end of the day, we can wonder, Lord, how did I go through that day? With your strength, I knew it. It's just by your divine strength that I was able to go through the day. And so it may be a paradox where you sit first before you can accomplish so much. But let us really understand that intimacy with God, you cannot replace it with just, you know, your own um, system, your own wisdom, your own, you know, agenda that you will pursue throughout the day, but sit and listen first unto the Lord. And so you, you and I can always testify that the words of the Lord that we read or we listened to or we pondered on during our quiet time, our devotional, those are the words that we actually needed to go throughout the day to sustain us, to enable us to accomplish what the Lord wants us to accomplish. So intimacy first, 
and then the industry follows. Industry means working, getting busy, doing preparations like what Martha was doing. You know, from, from the context, I, I believe we can understand that Martha and Mary, their household, they must have some servants that can help. And I believe that's why Mary can afford to sit first, to sit first at the Lord's feet and listen to what he has to say. Amen. Because if we get busy first at the beginning of every day, then we will notice that we will be so worried, we will be so upset, and we will just fret so much that it messes up our day, that it messes up even our approach and our attitude and the way we relate to people, our coworkers, our family members, our supervisors, or even our teammates, right? Our coworkers in the ministry when we fail to go for intimacy first. So S, sit and savor the Lord's presence. I, go for intimacy first. And the T in sit is treasure our time with our Savior. You know, Mary understood, hey, this may be a special moment. You know, maybe the Lord Jesus cannot stay long. Or it's been a while that he has visited us last. So I'm going to treasure this time with my Savior. Because I don't know when he will be back again. Church, we don't have that problem because when Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit, we are able to fellowship with God the Father, God the Son at any time because the Spirit lives in us. But we can still get so busy that we don't spend time, precious time, with our Lord Jesus Christ first. So treasure our time with our Savior. We know this already, but sometimes we forget that the first time, the, the first moments of every day must be spent with our Lord Jesus Christ. And that sets the tone for the rest of the day. It doesn't guarantee that everything will work out the way we want it, but it guarantees that w when we dwell in the presence of the Lord first, then we are assured that, Lord, I can trust you. I can put my faith in you that as I have listened to your word first and I, I choose to obey your word and pursue your will for me for this day, then everything will work out for good. Because you love me. It may not be according to what I want, to what I think is good. But I can trust that the Lord will make it work out for our good. Because he loves us. Amen. So treasure our time with our Savior. And the opposite is toiling. Toiling first that takes a toll on us. We go straight into the day, get to work, get to work, get too busy, get busy, 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 right? That it takes a toll on our spiritual health. It takes a toll on our mental health. It takes a toll on our physical health because we did not prioritize the treasuring of our time with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So... When Jesus proclaimed that Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her, may it be said about us as well that we have chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Our treasured moments with the Lord Jesus, nobody can take that away from us. Amen. Our special revelation and impressions upon our hearts that God gives to us during our devotional time, no one can take that away from us for the rest of our life. When we ponder upon the word of God 
and meditate and, and really understand and, and hear his voice and listen closely to his, to his leading. No one can take that away from us. But if we pursue the toiling and going to work for our own end, there's no problem with working. But again, the priority is what I'm talking about. We may just toil in vain. And toiling and toiling and toiling outside, you know, outside of our treasured time with our Savior then it will really take a toll on us. And, and, and most, most of us have experienced, right, where our friends wonder, how come you look so fresh, right? Even, you know, you look so joyful, even though we're so busy in our work, even, even though we have so many patients or so many clients to deal with, and yet there is a freshness in you, there is a joy in you, not knowing that it was because you spent your treasured time with our Savior first, which caused us to be infused with his supernatural strength by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so church never exchanged our treasured time with our Savior for the rushing to toil for, for the things of, of this world. To toil, of course, we have to work, right? But we have to take the priority first with spending time with our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ in worship, in reading his word and listening to his voice and just, just taking the time to, to hear, to hear from the Holy Spirit so that the rest of the day will fall into the right places. Amen. So let, shall we pray? Lord, thank you for reminding us to just sit, to find time every day to just sit. Because, Lord, that is what's most important at, at the beginning of every day or at the end of every day, to just sit at your feet, oh God, and learn from you and hear your voice and listen to what you have to say. Because our spirit, our soul, our, thrives on your word, oh God. Our spirit longs for your presence, for worship unto you, oh God, which can never be replaced by our busyness, which can never be replaced by our relationships with people, oh God. Our relationship with you is first and foremost, oh God, and I pray that your people, we will put the first thing first, the only thing needed, O oh God, that Mary has chosen, that Lord, to sit, O oh God, to be intimate with you first, O oh God, and to treasure our time with you, O oh Savior of our souls. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, when we do that, then we can face the day. Then we are ready to face the challenges with great faith and trust in you, with understanding that we are on a mission because we already listened to you. We have heard instructions from our master and so we know what to do. We will not scurry and hurry and worry and fret and be upset, oh Lord, but we can be peaceful, we can be calm. Even though we are busy, we get busy throughout the day, and yet, Lord, your supernatural peace, your supernatural um, calmness, oh God, and your supernatural strength is there to sustain us because we chose the best part first, which is to sit at your feet. Amen. Father God, we bring to you the needs that have been presented to us by our church. Lord, we thank you for my brother-in-law, Alaric, has been discharged, Lord, after 21 days in the hospital. Indeed, you are a great God. 
you're so merciful, oh Lord. You still have great plans for his life so he can minister to his family, to the church, oh God, to friends. I pray that you will continue to help him recover fast, oh God. And yet, Lord, in these times where he can rest, that, Lord, he will be refreshed, renewed, restored in his spiritual life, in his physical well-being, oh God, mental health, oh God, his total, total well-being, Lord Jesus. Thank you, oh God, for the miracle, even for Grace Santo and her family, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for you will do your healing also, oh God, upon her as they rest at home, oh God. Holy Spirit, minister to their entire family. And Lord, as they rest in you, Lord, may they feed on your word, oh God, for we cannot live a day without your word, oh Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the ministry of help from the church, oh God, bringing them food, oh God. Thank you for the love of the church evident, oh God. Hallelujah, we can do it, oh God, because of you who have loved us first. We pray for Nurse Hazel who is in the ICU right now. Oh God, touch her oh, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let her call upon you. Let the family call upon you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we just entrust her into your hands, oh God, knowing that you are able, oh God, to do what is best, oh Lord. And yet we plead for her healing, oh God. Lord, I pray for Norma Avila as well for healing from COVID pneumonia, Lord Jesus. Lord, nothing is too hard for you. You're able to do the healing, oh God, body, soul, and spirit. And so we commit that sister to you. Missionaries Russ and Patsy Turney at their home as well, resting, oh God, because they in quarantine, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you will you will help them recover fast, oh God, fully recovered in the name of Jesus. Missionary Brian and Sally Snyder at their home as well, oh Lord Jesus. Oh God, I pray that you extend their life some more, oh God, for there's, the mission is still so, so great, oh God. And yet we, we, we entrust, oh God, that you know what is best for them. We submit them to your will, oh God. For Sister Andrea, oh God, and her dad and son Isaiah also at home recovering from COVID, I pray. Lord, ikaw gamhanan gino, ikaw magatouch, oh God, sa ilang tanan, Lord God. I rebuke this spirit of infirmity. I rebuke this viral infection from of COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord God, you're a greater, you are our healer, and Lord you, we know that we can put our trust in you for this family, even for Isaac, Ilana, and his family also at home, oh God. Lord, extend, extend your hand upon them, oh God, and sustain them, oh God. May they look to you in faith, oh God. May they look to you and cry out to you, oh God, in desperation, oh God. I pray, Lord, that for all these people, that there's medical interventions, oh God, that these medications, the this uh, whatever, oh God, that the doctors prescribe for her, for them, oh God, that this will help, oh God, this will help in their recovery, oh God, even for Sister Anna Hurley and family, oh God, touch them, oh God, touch them, your hand is not too short that it cannot touch them, oh God, Holy Spirit, you are able to do above what we ask or think, oh God, for healing of the brothers and sisters that we love and care about, oh God. Sister Carla Gutel and family also recuperating at home, oh God. Just envelop them, oh God, with your loving presence, with your healing power, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And Lord, protection for the brothers and sisters, oh God, especially our frontliners who are at work, oh God. May your covering be upon them, oh Lord Jesus. And may they be your agents of healing and salvation, oh God. Wherever we go, oh God, all of us here, Lord Jesus. Lord, continue to, to heal Sister Ate Linda Lobato, Lord Ate Zeni Ragasa, Rick and Amy Defiant, Sister Rosa Ditaal, oh God, for whatever is ailing them, I pray. Lord, we declare that by
by your stripes we have been healed and that includes their ailments oh god their diseases their problems their situations oh god hallelujah lord jesus we can proclaim healing we can proclaim victory oh god and salvation upon those who need your help oh god i pray for comfort oh god for the family of sissy lasbury and oh god for the passing of her mom lord we thank you lord for she she committed her life to you oh god she was able to hear the gospel and make that decision for christ and so lord we believe that she is home in heaven oh god where there's no more pain no more crying no more sickness oh god but i pray Lord, comfort, oh God, Cecil, oh God, and, and, and their family, Lord God, the entire family, the grandchildren, oh God, the, the, the siblings of Cecil and their families, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for you will help them, oh God, help them through the grieving process, oh God, for mom. Hallelujah. We also pray for comfort for the family of Pastor Larry Chapman who died this morning of COVID pneumonia. Oh, God, Lord, Holy Spirit, just give comfort, oh, God, and peace upon the family. And, Lord, even those that we don't know, oh, God, are going through. Pa Brother Pastor Ray and Fentis, oh, God, let your comfort be upon him and his family, oh, Lord. Those, oh, God, not just who have experienced death in their families, not just from COVID, oh God, whatever cause of death, Lord, I pray that people, that people will just look to you, oh God, for comfort and peace. And that, Lord, that the lives, the family will ponder upon life more seriously, that they need a Savior, that there is life beyond this physical life, that there is eternity and that eternity can be spent in heaven when we make our decision for Christ. Lord, I pray for the missionaries that are going out to the nations, Sister Lynette, Sister Wang, oh God, and even our son Eli who's already in the nations. Oh God, I pray for your divine protection upon them, even the teams, oh God, that are going alongside with them. Lord, thank you, thank you for the open doors, and I pray for safety, and I pray for the souls, oh God, who open hearts, open minds for the gospel, Lord, that they may preach the gospel boldly and with love and conviction, and we know that the Holy Spirit will be the one to bring in the harvest. Oh, indeed, Lord, save souls, save souls in the nations, especially, oh God, where they haven't heard the gospel yet. And even here, oh God, when we have opportunity, Lord, in person or through social media, that we will preach the gospel in season and out of season, oh God. And we know that your word will not return void, oh God. Lord, I pray for those who are looking for jobs and work, oh God. You are the Jehovah Jireh. You know your plans for everyone and plans for good and not to harm, oh God. And so I pray for those who lost their job that you will provide, oh no, Lord, another opportunity for work or business. For those who are looking, oh God, that they will find the right uh, positions, oh God, the workplace where they will thrive and grow and be a blessing and be a minister to their work workmates, oh God. I pray for the ministers, Lord, the pastors, the church leaders, oh God, that you will sustain that, that your church, oh God, will, will be strong and will be uh, more on fire, oh God, even if we do live stream or Zoom or whatever form, oh God, of gathering, Lord Jesus, that we will not lose heart, but all the more, be more excited, be more on fire, because we see the day of the Lord's coming fast approaching, oh God, as we see the signs, oh Lord. We don't just focus on the signs, oh God, but we focus on what you have set for us to do. That as we preach the gospel, when this gospel is preached,
as a living testimony to all nations and then the end will come. May that be our relentless pursuit, oh God, to share the love of Jesus, to share the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of salvation, oh God, to everyone that you allow us to encounter or meet. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh God. We know that you will bring a great harvest, oh God. And we are excited to be part, oh God, of this incredible last day's harvest, oh Lord. We will witness signs and wonders, oh God. People being saved, people calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. People being saved, your children being manifest with the Holy Spirit ministry through the gifts of the Holy Spirit that people may know you, that people will turn to you, that people will repent from their sins. Oh Lord, we lift up the U.S., oh God, and all the nations, Lord Jesus, as we go through tumultuous times, oh God, but yet we depend on you for peace. We look to you, O oh God, for economic recovery, Lord, because you are the source of everything. And so, Lord, I pray for your people to be faithful, for your people to be vigilant, O oh God, to stand up for righteousness, to proclaim the gospel, O oh God, to proclaim righteousness, and to take a stand and be willing to be persecuted even for the sake of of the Lord Jesus Christ, our faith and love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you, thank you for you. We know that you are doing a great and mighty work that we haven't seen and witnessed in the past. Lord, greater things ahead of us. Oh, we want to take part, oh God, we want to take part of that great harvest of souls, oh Lord, and I pray that you will supernaturally give us strength to do it, Lord. That you will supernaturally grant us boldness to do it, Lord. And Lord, I know, I know that there's great rejoicing in heaven when one by one, souls, people will turn to you. People will be saved. Hallelujah. And Lord, we just commit to you, our, our church, may we be faithful, oh God. Lord, we even pray for Obed Onyas, Lord Jesus, our friends, oh God, that are sick. I pray for your healing touch upon him and all our friends and loved ones and those that we, we weren't able to mention, oh God. But Lord, we know that you have heard our cry. You have heard our petition. You have heard our prayers because your word has promised, oh God, that you will hear us. When our hearts are contrite, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We commit to you the rest of this day, oh God. And I pray that as your church will gather on Sunday, Lord, that we will worship with all our hearts, with all our minds, with our, all our soul and spirit. And that your word will be preached with such power, oh God. Such power to transform lives. Because it's the Holy Spirit making the word come alive in our lives so that we can be changed and transformed from glory to glory to become more and more like Jesus Christ. And we, we bind our faith together. We join our hearts and hands and spirit together, lifting up these prayers, this supplication, this request, oh God. Because we pray this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have a blessed day, everyone. And we pray that you have a peaceful rest of your night. As we continue to be prayerful, as we do our 21 days of prayer and fasting, let us really understand that our, th the battles that we face are won, not by our own strength or our own wisdom, but by the power of the Holy Spirit in us. And when we fight on our bended knees, amen.